Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Doing It God's Way. It is Wednesday, the 28th of July. Can you believe July is almost gone? And it seems like July 4th was literally just yesterday. We're about to go into August. And um, a lot of children are starting back to school in August. My God, it seems like 2021 just came in yesterday. And pretty soon we will be uh, going into 2022. To be very honest with you, I never thought I'd be alive to see these kind of years, um, especially with all that's going on in the world today. I was talking with someone this past Sunday, and she was saying the same thing, that she never thought she'd be alive to see the kind of world that we are living in today. And that is the reason why I decided to deal with the topic how to not be afraid to stand for Christ in a world that is anti-Christ. You all know that this is an anti-Christ world. We are moving toward uh, the appearance of the beast. And pretty soon we will uh, have people receiving the mark of the beast. And while I'm saying that, those of you who believe that this vaccination is the mark of the beast, you are sadly mistaken. Just go read your Bible, do your research, and you will come to understand that the beast has not shown himself yet. And there cannot be a mark until the beast has been revealed. And the beast cannot be revealed until... Jesus raptures the church. When Jesus raptures the church, the Holy Spirit will leave the earth and then these heathens and antichrist people will be free to do whatever they want to do sin-wise, okay? But the prayers of the righteous are holding it down, okay? And, and, and the, the beast cannot be revealed until the Lord calls his church home. But study it for yourself. You don't have to believe me. It's in the word of God. Alrighty. Uh, but how to not be afraid to stand for Christ in a world that is anti-Christ. Now, I realized that I did not finish uh, the topic that we dealt with last week. Okay. Um, I didn't finish that. And I'm going to finish that. Okay. But I won't finish it tonight. We talked about how not to allow your thoughts um, to, to, to steal your joy, drain the joy out of your heart and your spirit. Okay. And we're going to get back to that. But tonight I feel like I really have to deal with how to not be afraid to stand for Christ in a world that is against Christ. Um, you know that this is an ugly world. This is an ugly world. Uh, this world is full of sin. It's full of pride. It's full of hatred. It's full of judging one another. Okay, it's full of everything that is contrary to the word of God. It's full of man's vile thoughts, evil thoughts. This is why we have men uh, going after children in pornography. Um, this is why pornography is such a big deal in this day and time. Uh, the Bible tells us that the God is going to turn us over to our own lust of the flesh. Okay, those that don't follow him, they're just going to be turned over more and more and more to the lust of their flesh. And all of these things are beginning to develop right now. So because these things are coming forth, we're going to have to really know how to stand for God because what is happening, as the Bible says, is that right is wrong and wrong is right. That's the kind of world we're living in. Okay, and the Bible says that would happen. They will believe a lie before they believe the truth. Jesus. And these things are happening right now. Okay. People will rather grab hold of some lie that was told and run with it and bring in 20 other people with them to believe it than to believe the truth and the word of God about a situation. Are you following me? Okay. So this is the kind of world we're living in. We're living in a time that can make you very afraid to stand up for what you believe. Why? Because if it's against what someone else believes, or if it's against what the world believes, okay, then they attack you, okay? They come after you. They smear your name. 
They put you on social media and talk about you like a dog. Okay. And so now people are afraid. God's people, let me be specific. God's people are afraid to stand up for the, what, what the Bible says is the truth. What the Bible says is right. What the Bible says about what we're supposed to be doing and how we're supposed to be uh, living. You understand? Uh, even some of those in religious authority compromise or stay away from certain subjects that can be very controversial. Okay? Who was the most controversial person on earth? It was none other than Jesus Christ himself. Jesus Christ himself came against what the laws of the land believed, what the, the high priests and all of those believed, okay? And so he was very, very controversial. The people began to say, well, this can't be the son of God because, you know, Moses said this and that and the other, okay? And then, but he's just a, he was born to, to Joseph, you know? He's a carpenter's boy. This can't be the son, of, the son of God. You know, who is this man? You know, it, th th he's of the devil. <laughs> Now, you do know that the devil doesn't heal. The devil doesn't deliver. The devil doesn't set free. And the devil does not cast him own self out, his own self out of people. So what they were saying didn't even make sense. But their hearts were so Jeffrey Corey. Oh, my God. Oh, y'all don't understand. This young man. Oh, my God. He was at death's door. He was on a ventilator for, I, I believe, almost a year. Almost a year. Oh my God, but we pray for him. He's a phenomenal musician in this area. He's on tonight. Jeffrey Corey, I love you. I love you. Oh my God. The prayers of the righteous have gone up for this young man. Oh my God. You just don't, y'all just don't know. You don't know this young man was very, 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 very sick. He, you, you could not have gotten more sick than Jeffrey was. Oh, to God be the glory. Okay. Oh, look, that makes me even more determined to stand for Christ. Okay. When I see God move like that, when I see God do the impossible, it was the impossible. Okay. For Jeffrey to be up and on this, on this social media, that, that was impossible. Oh, hell, come on and clap your hands and praise God with me for God touching and delivering Jeffrey Corey. Thank you, Jesus. And this is why I stand for Christ. This is just backing me up. And, and what I'm trying to tell you, what I'm going to be sharing with you tonight, that you have got to stand for Christ. And if you do, you're going to see Christ move. You're going to see God moves, move in supernatural ways. Lord Jesus, don't let me get out. Don't let me get out of control right now. Okay. Ooh, thank you, Lord. I'm about to go up, saints. Ooh, okay. Even some of the religious people. Those are in authority, compromise, and, and stay away from certain subjects that can be very controversial. And I don't even know, I don't even need to go deal with those subjects tonight. You know what they are, okay? But if it's something controversial, if it's something that they think is going to offend people, then they're not going to deal with it. They're going to stay away from it, okay? Who offended people? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ offended people the most. He was the most controversial and he was the, the one who offended people the most because he did not get into what man thought or what man was teaching or what man was saying. Well, somebody saying, well, he was Jesus Christ. He was the son of the living God. You need to understand that he was came into earth born in flesh. You understand? He left his high throne in glory. And God, with his supernatural ways, made him a human being. And he inserted him into Mary's womb. Now, y'all got to get this, okay? Because people like to think, well, that was Jesus. So no wonder he could do it. Jesus became a man. He became a living soul on this earth, okay? He, he, he had to do all the things that we do. He had to eat. He had to pray. He had to sleep, okay? He, he had to do all those things, you understand? Everything that we do, because he was flesh. So we can't use that as an excuse as to why Jesus Christ could do it, but we can't. Jesus became flesh for us. 
He had to be just like us to be sacrificed for us. What good would it do to have, to have Jesus in his holy state, rather in his supernatural state, sacrificing for us? You understand? He had to feel what we feel. He had to go through what we go through. Jesus was tempted. Je Listen, the devil came after him the way the devil comes after us. So let's not use Jesus as an excuse as to why we can't do it. Lord, help me, Jesus. I didn't mean to go there tonight. Okay? My God. All right. So what are we to do? How do we stand for Christ in a world that is going to come after you when you stand up for what is right? What God has said is right. And you, you reject what the world is saying is right. Let me tell you this, and y'all can live by this and write it down. If the world says it, it's wrong. <laughs> it is the opposite of what God is saying. Write that down. If the world is saying something is true, it is the opposite of what God is saying is so. And you could take that to the bank, or you could take that to the word of God. You understand? Because the scripture says, that, 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 that the flesh is enmity against God. The flesh is God's enemy. So human beings think in the flesh. Unless they have been born again, they think according to the flesh. They think according to the lust of the flesh. So whatever they're saying is okay. Whatever they're saying, this, this is okay. We can do this. You know, God accepts us all. It is wrong. God does accept us all. But you must be saved. You cannot enter this kingdom of God without accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Do you understand? There is no other way to God except through Jesus Christ. And the forgiveness of sin, any kind of sin, must take place. God loves us all. You know what? But he's still going to punish us if we don't get rid of this sin. If we don't accept Jesus Christ... As our Lord and Savior. We must be saved. And I don't care who you are. Or how you think you, you, you should be. Or want to be. Or was born. You know there's all kinds of things going on nowadays. Okay. But there's one thing that is for sure. You must accept Jesus Christ. As your Lord and Savior. To see God in peace. When you leave this world. You understand, and there are no exceptions, none, no exception. You understand? So the time is coming when you're going to have to choose this day who you're going to serve. And the time is now. It's now. We're going to have to choose. We're either going to serve God all the way or we're going to serve the devil. Now, I always had this expression, I'm not going to hell with a straight jacket. Okay, what that means is, I'm not going to have one foot in the church and, and, and have these restrictions on my life, but yet got another foot in the world and doing the worldly thing too. That's what I call going to hell in a straight jacket. Because you can't be in both. You're either going to choose God or you're going to choose Satan. That's the way it is. That, that's the Bible. I'm not making this up. Okay, the Bible says, choose ye this day whom you will serve. So, how do you stand for Christ? With the fear of being ridiculed, with the fear of being prosecuted, persecuted, whatever percuted there is, okay? Uh, how, do you, how, do you, how do you overcome that, okay? And I want to know this. The first person to stand up for what was right, as I said, was Jesus Christ himself. So, why is it so difficult for us to be able to do the same thing. Okay, let's deal with that first. Why? Okay, reason number one. And you might want to write this down. We have made the world our home. That's the first reason why we can't do it. We are so comfortable in the world. We, 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 we don't even realize it sometimes. But we go after everything that the world has to offer. And we are not willing to forsake what we want for, the, for what God wants in our lives. Did you get that? We have made ourselves comfortable. And the Bible tells us 
in 1 Peter 2, 11. 1 Peter, 2nd chapter, 11th verse. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. Let's stop right there. I beseech you, this is Paul talking, as strangers and pilgrims. We're, we're supposed to be strangers in this world. This world is not our home. That is the reason why we're all going to leave here. <laughs> we're all leave here. Now, where you end up at is up to you. But we're all going to leave here at some point. Do you hear what I'm saying? So this world is not our home. And those of us who have, are professing Jesus Christ have become too comfortable in life itself. I'm not saying that God doesn't bless. I'm not saying God doesn't want you to have things. But I'm going to give you an example. And I may have told you this before. But when I was single, I wanted a husband, as most single girls do. And many of y'all have heard this before. Okay? And, and all my friends were getting married. All right? But the point I'm getting to is that I wanted to get married. And I saw myself in the American way with the, you know, little white picket fence and the house the children, you know, the boy and the girl, you know, the, the, the family, you understand? And, and that's what I wanted more than anything, okay? Because I was now 28 years old, and I was praying to God. I was seeking God for that. I didn't realize that I had put that ahead of my desire for God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I'm just brilliant. Can I get real with you tonight? I didn't realize that I was putting my desire Ahead of my relationship with God. I wanted that more than anything. And I didn't know that I was putting my desire ahead. Well, what you mean, Pastor Ross? Well, this is what I mean. I didn't consult God about who he wanted me to marry. If he wanted me to get married. I didn't consult God about any of that. It was just what I wanted. You understand? It was in my mind, in my heart. This is what I wanted. And this, that had become my first priority. Lord God, have mercy. That had become my first priority. And you, you know what? We do these things that we don't even realize we're doing it. Oh, but the loving God that we serve, the merciful God that we serve, he came to me and he spoke to me. And he said, I will give you what you want when you learn to put me first. Mm. My God, I didn't even realize I was saved, sanctified, shouting in church, the whole nine yards, okay? But I, I didn't realize that I wanted my things that I wanted, the things that I wanted, I wanted that more than I wanted God. Lord Jesus. And sometimes I tear up, you know, thinking about how out of order we can get with our relationship with God. Do you understand what I'm saying? And the Lord told me, when you learn to make me your priority, then I'll give you what you want. And I want you to know, my dear friends, that I began to pray and I began to act to, to, to go after God. And I went after God so hard that you know what? All those natural things that I wanted, because the Lord brought the scripture to me, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these other things will be added unto you. God wants us to love him first. And then if he knows that we love him first, he'll give you anything you want. I'm telling you, anything that you want that's in his will. You understand what I'm saying? God will give you the desires of your heart. If you seek him, it, oh my God, if you make him top priority in your life. You understand? And then God will add all these other things. Success. Okay? Uh, finances. Uh, the house. The home. The children. The spouse. You understand? And as soon as I, I began to really seek God, my desires changed. Good God Almighty. Woo! My heart changed. And I began to just love God with all my heart. God became the most important thing to me in my life. You understand what I'm saying? He became my priority. His ways became my priority. Being in his face through prayer became my priority. And you know what happened? When I looked up, I was meeting this guy. Okay. By the time I met this guy, I wasn't even looking for a husband. I'm telling you, God changed my priorities. Okay. 
and I forgot about the worldly stuff, okay? And God, when I, when I met my husband, I wasn't even thinking about a husband. I wasn't even thinking about a husband. And this guy turned out to be my husband, Lord Jesus. And it'll be 38 years, 38 years, 38 years this October 2nd. Isn't God good? Isn't God good? And then came the twins. I remember when God told me, it's now time for you to have children. Okay, because I always wanted children. I adored children. And so after I got married, he said, it's now time for you to have children. Well, my husband didn't want children. So I said, well, God, you know my husband doesn't want children. You're going to have to tell him. That was on a Wednesday. On Saturday morning, we woke up. My husband turned over to me and he said, wife, wife, I guess it's time for us to have kids. <laughs> you see how God would give you the desire of your heart if you put him first. And sometimes we're not putting him first and we don't even know it. But God is so merciful until he lets us know what we're doing wrong. Oh, hallelujah. Where am I? I've lost my place. Jesus, that was reason one. Okay, we have made this world our home. We become too comfortable here on earth. And we're going after the things of the world more than we're going after God. We think it's sufficient to give God a little 15 minutes at the end of the day. But all day long, our mind has been on everything else and everybody else. We'll spend hours, okay? We'll spend hours scrolling down our phone, okay? Looking for a house or looking for a new furniture or looking for a new car or looking for whatever it is you're looking for, okay? Or new clothes, okay? Spend hours. But then when it comes to God, we'll give him 15 minutes. Listen, this is not, this is not to make you feel bad. This is to help us grow. This is to help us get it right. This is to help us understand that we're going to have to stand for Christ in the time that we're living in. You understand? So I'm trying to explain to you now why we haven't been able to withstand criticism so far. Okay? So far, we haven't been able to withstand criticism when we're holding up the bloodstained banner, we know we kind of compromise and back down, okay? Because we don't want to come off strong. We don't want to come off too holy. We don't want to come off too, uh, uh, that's not love, okay? Nobody loved more than Jesus Christ, but he still told you the truth. My God. He, you don't have to get ugly to tell people the truth. You don't have to be nasty. You don't have to be mean. But you do have to tell them the truth, okay? So reason one, we have made this world our home. We're too comfortable on earth. Reason two, Jesus, we are afraid to be different. We don't want to stand out. We don't want to be different. We want to blend in with everybody else. We don't want people to say, oh, look at that person over there. You know, they think they're so safe. You know, we don't want people saying that about us. This is not a matter of thinking you're so safe. This is a matter of carrying out what God has told us to do here on earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is not a matter of being deep. This is not a matter of being so sanctimonious. You understand? Now, people can be sanctimonious. Yes, they can be. Now, that's the other extreme, okay? But if you get this thing right, you're going to have a very loving, compassionate heart for other people. But at the same time, you're going to tell people the truth. Because what you don't want is to stand before God and God show you your life or a particular person and he has this person before you and God says you could have saved that person. You could have rescued that person, but you were too afraid to tell them the truth. My God, I cannot stand before God and have him say that to me. You understand? Because you do understand that you're gonna, your life is going to be reviewed. The Bible says in Revelation that the books were opened. <laughs> the books were opened. And you guys going to go, go through every account of everything that you did here on earth or didn't do. So, you know, you, you got to remember that we're not being, we're not being self-righteous. But we are standing for what we believe, saints. We've got to stand for what we believe. This is the day of standing up for what you, because otherwise the devil is going to mow you down, mow you over, and you're going to find yourself blending in with those who are lost. Jesus help us. So reason two, we are afraid to be different. We don't want to stand out. 
Reason three, okay? I'm talking about why it's so difficult for us to have the same level of commitment that Jesus had here on earth to speaking what is right, okay? Reason three, we care too much about what people think. Oh, I'm about to jump up on that. We care too much about what people think about us. <laughs> Woo, Jesus. Now, that's a hard one to get it over. I'm not going to sit here and act like this stuff is easy. It's not. You got to work at it. You understand? You got to ask God to help you. Do you understand? Now, I remember when I was in a place in my life where I was very affected by what people thought, by what people said. You understand? And one night, God woke me up in the middle of the night, told me to open my Bible to Isaiah 54. And in Isaiah 54, it goes on talking about, you know, how can you forget God, your creator? And you're standing up here trembling about man and worried about what man thinks and worried about what they're saying. And you have forgotten that I am the Lord, thy God, thy creator and man who shall return to dust. You are fearing them more than you are fearing me. Read Isaiah 54. You understand? Isaiah 54. Okay. So we care too much about what people think about us. We don't want nobody to think, oh, oh you know, he, he or she is just, you know, they this, they did so, they that, or they other. Does it matter what they think? Oh my God. I have said this to people so many times. Why does it matter what they think? Jesus, why? And it took God to get me over people. Trust me. Isaiah 54 got me over people. When I remembered what God said in Isaiah 54, when he said, why are you trembling at man? Like, like, like he got some heaven or hell to put you in. Read Isaiah 54. Read it. Read it for yourself. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Okay? But I'm telling you that, that we are very concerned. More concerned about what people think than what God is thinking. Many times we're more concerned about what people People are thinking about us and saying about us than we are about what God is saying about us. Jesus, Jesus. That was reason three. Okay, so let's get into this. Again, I don't know if I'm going to finish this tonight, but yes, I'm moving on through. How to not be afraid. How to not be afraid to stand up for Christ in a world that is anti-Christ. Steps. I got steps for you. Step one, emerge yourself in God's word. Hmm. The more you read it, the more it will change how you think and feel. Trust me on this. Been there, done that. Trust me on this. The more you read it, the more the word of God will change you. And that's what the scripture means when it says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. How does your mind get renewed? Only through the word of God. Okay, we've got to pick that Bible up and read it every day. And then you get to a point where you have read the scripture, the same scripture down through the years. But each time you read it now, as you grow in Christ, you get a different revelation from it. <laughs> God is a God of, of creativity and variety. God is, not the <coughs> God is not lacking creativity. God does not lack variety. Do you hear what I'm saying? So the more you read the word of God, the more your mind is going to be transformed. The more your mind is going to be renewed. You understand? All of a sudden, you're going to find yourself not caring as much about what people think. You're going to find yourself, it's okay if I'm standing alone. That, the, I'm telling you, you're going to be all right. <clears throat> you're going to be all right. Because you're going to be reassured in your mind and your heart that you are pleasing the Lord. And that's going to be more important to you than anything else in this entire world. Okay? That's step one. Emerge yourself in God's word. Step two, allow yourself mm, to be tuned into the Holy Spirit. This will connect you more to what God really wants you to do and give you the courage to do it. The Bible tells us 
that the Holy Spirit comes to lead and guide us into all truth. You understand? So as you connect to the Holy Spirit, it is connecting you more to God because the Holy Spirit only teaches you what God is saying. <laughs> the Holy Spirit only guides you into where God wants you to go. You understand? So the more you read the Bible, the more you connect to the Holy Spirit, the more you will have courage to stand up for God. It works that way. Trust me. Been there, done that. It works like that. You understand? And you hear the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Say this. Don't say that. Mm. Say this. Pull back. Don't say anymore. Leave that subject alone. I had to learn that. <laughs> I had to learn that because I was a very, very, very outgoing person all of my life. Very friendly. Loved people. And had too much trust in people. You understand? And I would just freely talk. And found out that they were using my words against me. In ways that I didn't even mean it. They would go back and repeat it in a way that it was vicious. And that wasn't the way that I said it at all. Or enlarge upon it and turn it into something that I did not say. Okay? So I had to learn this. You understand? And so I had to learn to get myself in line with the Holy Spirit. So I know when to speak and when not to speak. If you study the life of Jesus, Jesus spoke when they brought him before uh, Pharaoh and all these people. What, what, uh, Jesus spoke and then there were times that he didn't speak. Do you hear what I'm saying? Okay. And the Holy Spirit is who guides us. All right. And the Holy Spirit will give you the courage. But the Holy Spirit comes, he brings you power. And that power inside of you gets activated and it gives you courage to stand for what you know is right. But you got to tune into it. Jesus. Alrighty. That was step two. Step three. Prayer. Prayer. Prayer will connect you to God. And more importantly. Will allow you to hear from God. Mm. Prayer connects you. That's the only way we can connect to God. Is through prayer. That's the only way we can talk to God. Is through prayer. Okay. You want to be able to stand up for, for Christ. In this evil day. You have got to pray. There is no other way around it. It is prayer that strengthens you. It is prayer that connects you to God. It is prayer that gives you courage. It is prayer that, that stirs up the Holy Ghost within you. It is prayer. My God, my God. It is prayer how you learn to keep your tongue under control. It's through prayer. You won't make it without prayer, children. I'm trying to tell you. You won't make it unless you pray. Unless you pray, you will not be able to stand up for what's right. I'm telling you the truth. You're not going to be able to do it because you're not going to have the inner strength. See, when you pray, prayer gives you inner spiritual strength. And without that inner spiritual godly strength, you won't be able to stand. You won't be able to stand. Jesus, Jesus. Okay, what else does prayer do? Prayer builds you spiritual. I just said that. Okay, what else does prayer do? Prayer causes you to be able to trust God. The more you talk to God and the more fellowship you have with God and the more intimacy you have with God, the more you will trust God. Yeah, It's just like a good friend. The more you talk to that friend, the more you begin to trust him. Come on, somebody. I'm giving you the truth. The more you talk to that friend and as the years go by, okay, you begin to trust that friend. Okay, and if somebody comes along saying something negative to you about that friend, you'll just, oh, 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 hold up. I know this person, and they are not like that. Okay, the, the, the trust comes in. It's the same thing with God. The more you talk to God, the, 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 the more years you put into God, the more you will trust him. And so when he says to you that I will never leave you nor forsake you, you believe that. You understand? You begin to believe what God has said. Okay? When God says, you know, I will direct your path, you believe that, okay? When God says, say this, and I got your back, you believe that. God has had me go to preachers and say what thus saith the Lord. And I was trembling in my shoes, but I stood flat-footed and said it. The Holy Ghost gave me the courage to say what God wanted me to say. And I trusted God enough to know that he was going to take care of me when I was done. And he did it. Yes, he did. 
He took care of me when I was done. I wasn't blackballed. I wasn't dismissed. I wasn't hated. I wasn't, uh, uh, what, what happened was they saw that what God told me to tell them came to pass. <laughs> and see, when I first said it, the, the, the person I had to say it to said, that ain't true. That ain't from God. You know, and I left out, out of that office, despondent and heavy in spirit. And God said to me, don't even worry about it. He said, don't even worry about it. They'll see. They'll see. And sure enough, it was only like two or three years later. And what God had told me to tell them came to pass. Good God Almighty. You understand? God is never going to have you a liar. Whatever God tells you to say, it's what is going to be. And you trust God enough to know that what he said is what it is. Good God Almighty. And it don't matter who believes it or doesn't believe it. You understand? Okay. Step four now. We finish with prayer. Step four. Ask yourself this question. Am I more afraid of people than I am of God? Good Lord have mercy. Am I more afraid of people than I am of God? Let's, let's reverse that. Am I more afraid of God than I am of people? Jesus. That in itself will make you stand up for God. Okay? When you think about your future and how you're going to leave here and you got to stand before God, that in itself <clears throat> will make you stand up. Okay? When you think about the, oh, my God. I, many times I was afraid to do something that God wanted me to do. But I had to learn. I had to learn that I was going to trust God and I was going to be more afraid of God than I am of people. <clears throat> and the more I prayed and the more I read the Bible, the more my trust in God grew and the more I was able to deliver what thus saith the Lord. Whether people liked it, received it or not. And I said it in love. I didn't say it nasty. I didn't say it mean. You felt the love of Jesus Christ coming from me. But yet, like a parent, I had to tell you the truth. Just like a parent who loves their children. My God. So, and step five. Ask God to strengthen your heart to be willing to stand alone. You got to ask God to help you. There's no other way. You've got to ask God to help you. Okay? Lord, help me. I used to ask God to help me so much to be strong. Help me to stand for him. Help me to keep my mouth shut. Help me to be able to listen to the Holy Spirit and know when to talk and when not to talk. And I still pray that prayer. I still pray that prayer because I find myself saying things sometimes that I really didn't need to say. Just, just talking. Okay? So you still got to always keep yourself under subjection. You got to keep yourself under the word and the power and the spirit of God. Okay, Isaiah 7, 9. If you are not firm in faith, you will not be firm at all. And that's kind of like the revised version. Okay, that's Isaiah 7, 9. If you're not firm in your faith, mm, you're going to be on sick and sin all the time. You're going to be following people, whatever people say, whatever. You know, there's so many videos going around now on Facebook. You believe, in, you believe every video that comes your way. If it's, if it's a preacher or if it's some person you think is a person of God because they said it. There's got to be some truth to it. No, that is not true. <laughs> that is not true. The Spirit of God will discern for you what is true and what is not true. What you need to follow and what you need to leave alone. What you need to listen to and what you need to dismiss. You understand? That's why you got to stay tuned into the Holy Spirit. Because there's so much going around now on social media. It's getting to the point where people won't know what to believe. But I'm telling you right now, you can believe God and what God has to say about these situations. And that's why I don't even waste my time looking at all these videos. Listen, you can't look at all this stuff and think eventually you're not going to be confused and think that wrong is right and right is wrong. You cannot do it. you got to focus yourself on one thing and one thing only, and that is what has God said. What has God said? I can't listen to prophet this and pastor this and bishop this. Listen, God puts us under one person, one pastor, okay? And then the rest is him. You understand? It's him. It's what he says. It's not what others say. You understand? Come away from social media. It's, it's, people don't realize it, but it, it is draining your spiritual stability. Good God about it. 
It's draining because so many people have so many different opinions and so many different things to say. Oh my God. And now you don't know what to believe. Or on the other hand, you can't even hear God now. You can't hear God because you're so wrapped up in what people are saying and people are teaching. Lord help us. If you're not firm in the faith, you're not firm in anything. You're going to be standing on sink and sand. You've got to be firm in what God has said. You've got to know what God has said. And when you're firm in it, you will stand on it. You won't care who don't like it. You won't care who. You know, my girls sometimes, they, 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 they get tickled with me. They say, Mom, don't say nothing. Don't say that. Because when I see somebody going the wrong way, it's like something inside of me just says, Listen, honey, I need to tell you, you know, this is wrong. You, you, you doing, this is wrong. And my girl's like, mom, you, you embarrassing us. Listen, I'd rather embarrass them than, than let this soul be lost if I can help them. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. Oh, I'm going to say that again. It's not what you say, but it's how you say it. You cannot speak to people in a condemning way, but you have to give them the truth in a loving way. But you must say the truth. Amen? Amen. When we read God's word and we are obedient to it, we are laying a strong, solid foundation for our lives. The world can be tough, but we're moving into a time now where many believers will be persecuted for standing on the word of God. And you've got to be able to say, for God I live and for God I'll die. I'm not selling out God for anybody. I'm not selling out God for anybody. I'm not going to take back what I say for anybody. If I'm saying the word of God and what I'm saying is the truth, I'm going to stand on that and that's going to be it. You understand? That's where we are. That's the day and time that we're living in now. We, we're either going to stand for God or we're going to be sunk in with the devil. We're either going to stand for righteousness or we're going to be sunk in with the unholy. Lord, Father, God, we come to you tonight. We just thank you for this lesson. Oh God, we pray, God, that people will understand how important it is, oh Father, that they get rooted in you and that they follow these steps to do that, oh God. First of all, they need to understand why they haven't been able to do it. And now, God, you have helped us to have steps to be able to do it. Help us, God. Help us to pray for your strength to do it. Give us a mind to do it. Give us the will to do it. In the name of Jesus, give us the heart to follow you. Give us the heart to seek after you. Give us the heart to want to pray. Give us the heart to want to read your word. Give us the heart to want to stand for you in this wicked world. God, help us to have compassion on those who have not been told about you or have not found you. Help us to have compassion on their souls and let that compassion drive us to stand for the truth in the name of Jesus. Father, now we recognize we cannot do any of this without you. We have no strength to lean on, but we can stand on Christ, the solid rock. You are our rock. You are our strength. You are our salvation. You are our fortress. Oh God, you are our shield. You're the one who protects us. And what we need to understand is no harm can come upon us unless you allow it. Oh God, I, we studied Paul's life and the, the disciples' lives and how no harm could come to them until you said it was time for them to go home and meet you. Until then, you protected them. Even Jesus was led different ways because he, he would say, my time has not yet come. So God, we don't have to fear man because unless our time has come, you will protect us for whatever devices the enemy is trying to come up. And not only will you protect us, but you will reveal the schemes of the enemy. Yes, you will, Lord. You will reveal what the enemy is plotting and planning. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you because we can't live down here without you. We can't make it without you. You are our hope. You are everything that we need or ever could want. We thank you, Jesus, because there's nothing greater than you. There's no one 
greater than you. There's nothing more rewarding than you. There is no peace outside of you. There is no joy outside of you. There's no comfort outside of you. There's no strength outside of you. Father, we thank you because you truly are our all in all. You are everything that we need. We can find it in you. We bless your name tonight. I pray for everyone that listens to this uh, uh, this video. I pray, oh God, that you would touch them, that you will open their hearts to receive the message, and that it will take root, and they will find themselves growing in this area of their lives. God, I recognize that we're moving into a time, God, if we're not already there, that we have to stand for what we believe, and we need the courage and the strength to do so. Father, you have outlined a plan for us. Let us just do it. Let us obey. Let us follow that plan that we might, uh, uh, we might press forward for the prize, which is in Christ Jesus. We give you all glory tonight. We give you all praise. You are worthy of the praise. No one loves us like you and no one loves us more than you. We thank you. We honor you. We bless your holy name. We send these prayers up unto the, your throne under the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the son of the living God. We give you all glory, all honor, all praise belongs to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. I trust you will join me next week if God allows us all to be here. Okay, should the rapture take place first, I pray we all see each other in the rapture. Meanwhile, may the peace and the favor of God rest upon your life and the lives of your family. God bless you and I love you.